Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining the AWS for Industrial uh, series of sessions uh, in Hanover, Messe 2021. Uh, today's session, uh, we are going to talk about um, how to use digital twins to improve your industrial operations. Because the concept of a digital twin has been of huge interest to industrial customers for quite some time. Now with the maturity in technology, uh, there is a lot of things you can accomplish with very minimal amount of coding and development work. There are a lot of solutions available in the market as well. Uh, before that, before getting into the details, uh, quick introductions. My name is Pugal Janikaraman. I run the worldwide business development for industrial IoT for Amazon Web Services. I also have two additional speakers. Um, uh, Murli, why don't you introduce yourself? Hello, everyone. This is Murli Srinivas. Um, I am the lead, global lead for Digital Twin at Atos, and I'm really excited to be part of the presentation together with AWS. Um, I would also want our, our key customer and a key, key stakeholder in this whole Digital Twin journey, Mr. Lakshman, to introduce himself. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Lakshman Subhashindra Bose, uh, CEO of Renome Energy Services. Uh, having experience close to three decades uh, with the renewable industry. So I'm here to share my experience of using uh, digital twin in the renewable industry. Awesome. Uh, thank you very much, Murli and uh, Lakshmanan. Today, the agenda for this presentation, um, I'm going to talk about um, the three topics, or we are going to talk about three topics. The first one I will speak about is uh, the art of possible around digital twin using AWS IoT services and AIML. Then Morley will talk about um, digital twin solutions built by ATOS using AWS services and it has been implemented in renewable industry and which we are going to go to market together at manufacturing domain. Murli will talk about it. After that, um, Lakshmanan, a visionary in the industry, was implemented digital twin to streamline renewable power and utility industry. Uh, we'll talk about the solution they have built and they have deployed. With that, I will go into uh, digital twin art of the possible with AWS services. Uh, let's first define what digital twin means and why customers are asking for it because this requirement has been in the industry for quite some time. Uh, this primarily involves a virtual representation of a physical asset. Uh, a physical asset can be a car or a truck or a plane or a wind turbine or a ship operating in a remote environment. Without being next to that uh, asset, a maintenance technician or somebody else trying to understand the behavior uh, and that construct is what we call it as a digital twin. Obviously, it does something more than that as well, just by representing alone, not by just representing it alone. It enhances the understanding of the physical asset with a whole bunch of technology like AI, ML, visualization capability, things like that. And in addition to that, customers are asking, uh, can we simulate the behavior of this digital twin um, in an unknown operating environment? because you don't want to put an asset at risk for a large ships or a other assets at, to, at a risk in an unknown operating weather and weather conditions and environment like that. They want to simulate it virtually on the digital twin on how the asset behavior will be in an unknown operating environment and optimize the behavior of that physical asset instead of operating that uh, physical asset itself uh, in an unknown condition. This is these are the requirements we are getting. These are the expectations from the customer. Obviously, this might involve deterministic model like math and physics-based model, or it can involve AIML model, heuristic models like AIML. Uh, with that, uh, let me go into uh, what are all the use cases we are seeing. Again, this talks about at a high level the three major phases an industrial customer go through before they can launch a product and support it. Ideation phase, which is primarily a design um, function where you conceptualize and design a product. After that is realization phase where the product you have conceptualized or designed, you hand it over to manufacturing and uh, supply chain to manufacture it or assemble the product from based on parts coming in from suppliers. And after you are done with it, you hand it over to your aftermarket organization to sell it, 
service it, support it. The needs are different for all these three phases. R&D organization is trying to understand the product operating in the field better so they can improve the part reuse or improve the product designs for the next generation product. And for that, they are looking at how leveraging a digital twin like a product twin or a production twin so they can design the production processes better or a product design better. In the manufacturing phase, customers are looking at three major twins we are seeing in the industry. Again, this is not an exhaustive list. One is a product twin to compare the actual production uh, of the product versus the design intent. The other one is around process twin, which is to compare the, the digital manufacturing uh, processes versus the actual manufacturing processes driven by a lot of PLM vendors who have solutions in this area. Other one is around the facility twin, which uh, is around how do you set up a digital twin of the complete factory infrastructure for remote walkthrough, safety, occupancy issues, things like that. Utilization or the aftermarket world, huge interest, uh, primarily around product twin. To primarily optimize the performance of the product or improve serviceability, all of it, which Murli and Lakshman is going to talk about. Uh, reducing downtime because the solution um, uh, Renom has solved is primarily around the service or the utilization phase. A lot of details around it. Okay. With that, uh, let me go into the details on how to use a digital twin or how do you construct a digital twin. There's a whole bunch of information needed. Obviously, there is an operational data which is needed from the actual asset using a technology like IoT. And there is also a whole bunch of other information you need. For example, maintenance history, the operational history. You might also need visual representation. And also there could be math and a physics-based model which can deterministically predict the behavior of the asset might be needed. And scenarios where math or physics cannot do that, you might have to leverage heuristic model like AIML to predict the behavior, possibly weather conditions, which is very difficult to do with math-based models. So technology-wise, there is a whole bunch of technology needed. And this is possible to do today, which is what ATOS has done with the pre-built solution. They have taken a whole bunch of services like uh, our, from our IoT portfolio, like IoT SiteWise, IoT Greengrass, IoT events, uh, services like that. Along with that, a bunch of services like uh, AIML services like SageMaker and built a complete analytical models and using a visualization technology as well. Um, the best customer reference AWS has got today is Woodside Energy. This is a large offshore oil rig. A complete digital representation was created and they are a reference customer for us. They have presented uh, this together at our forums. There is a YouTube video, you can um, look for it in the YouTube out there. Uh, where the customer talks about digitizing the complete offshore oil rig and building a digital twin where they don't have to fly in a maintenance technician 100 kilometers off the shores of Australia somewhere to go look at uh, physical assets. They can do it remotely from their offices uh, with the digital twin they have created. So um, awesome work done on that area. Um, with that uh, reference architecture, uh, this is the reference architecture uh, we are leveraging for all the solutions ATOS is taking forward uh, globally today, not only for renewable space, but for manufacturing customers. The foundational service we are using is AWS IoT SiteWise, which provides asset modeling capability and data ingestion from OPC UA servers to PLC SCADA devices, which is ingested and it creates a data model, asset model, and then uh, they leverage this data which is coming out to build an AIML model to build a complete framework uh, with which they can uh, configure solutions for different assets out there. Again, Murli will talk about it. With that, I'm going to hand it over to Murli to go deeper into the solution they have built. Thanks, Murli, off to you. Thank you. Thank you, Pugal. Um, so, um... I think uh, a lot have been said regarding the um, regarding the digital twin. What exactly is digital twin all about? And uh, we we have learned a lot about uh, what kind, how many types of digital twin are there. I'm not I'm not trying to repeat what Google said. I would just want to add to what he said. Um, so essentially, digital twin is uh, I mean perceived as a technology block or a technology stack. 
and different people talk about digital twins in in completely different way depending on who has or who has what interest in 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 providing those services it could be augmented reality it could be iot it could be um, uh, simulations it could be physics based simulations and so on and so forth but essentially um, what we what we kind of uh, infer here is it is a stitching together of different digital threads which actually creates a digital twin so if you can imagine i think uh, different processes requires different kind of uh, business digital information which needs to be captured which needs to be synthesized and the outcomes driven out of it so how how have we done it and here athos uh, athos sees itself like a, a pioneer in terms of uh, uh, doing the system integration part of uh, the whole digital twin and the key component here is we are looking at a top down view of engaging with customers such as renom and we need some visionary customers up front who actually can look into the technology and look into the future requirements very clearly and that's what we started with uh, a very consultative way of engaging that means a kpi based um, engagement model a business challenge based engagement model and then breaking it down into different digital threads and these digital threads can come from the it side it could come from the ot side or it can also be um, from the semantic technologies and essentially we see all the digital threads can be bucketized in one of these three digital blocks whether it's it data ot data or semantic data and the value as a system integrator athos as a system integrator brings is to contextually link all these digital threads in the back end which is basically what the digital twin platform of athos offers and this digital twin platform is hosted on aws and as pogal mentioned is in the back end working with all the aws services which was named by by pogal and once you have the data backbone created then it is a matter of pulling the right context and the right data and creating simple business analytics or doing ai machine learning or even visualizing and showing the right content for a user to improve their services or improve their operations and and here we are confident that we can uh, address all the different business areas in a manufacturing world whether it is product development in the r&d stage to reduce the cost of uh, um, product prototypes or it could be in the operation stage or logistics um, area it could also be like what we have done with renom in the operation and maintenance area so across the uh, the entire business process we are confident to apply the same digital twin platform which essentially is aggregating data and putting them in context of each other um, and and on top of it we can implement uh, and natural language processing we could have uh, uh, visualization through shown through uh, augmented reality or integrate some of these uh, uh, chatbots which actually provides much better user experience for customers on the feed um with with that i would just want to dwell upon our engagement model typically uh, since it is a new topic since it's something which is just starting off um we would always want to first baseline the kpi uh, and then go after achieving those kpi in a very limited duration and in this case uh, like what we have done with renom we started with a proof of value which is basically um, fixing a certain parameter for example operation cost or inventory reduction um, or availability of machines and then we did the 4m 6e methodology which you see on the right hand side that means to improve a kpi a man machine material or method efficiency has to be improved to be able to address the kpi and once we know what digital threads are going to play a role we map that and put it into our platform and create a underlying digital twin data model which actually becomes the backbone of the entire solution and here we also measure the maturity model of the customers in terms of where they are with respect to the the maturity of uh, um, the data which they have uh, for example it could be simple uh, connectivity maybe the first level of maturity or it could go into simple analytics ai machine learning but the ultimate 
goal is to reach a self-adjusting and self-configuring system, which is the top of the pyramid at level six. And we hope and wish that uh, most of the customers are able to transition from level two towards level six to, to have autonomous and self, uh, self-correcting self systems going forward in, um, in, in their operations or in their business areas. So what have we done and how did we reach where we are today with this platform? I think it was it needed a visionary and it, it needed a visionary person like Lakshman and a visionary company like Renom to be pa- a partner in this whole journey of Digital Twin. And thanks to uh, Renom, who has been one of the leading or one of the first and the leading independent service provider for renewable assets. And they are uh, they are relatively young company, so to say, but extremely visionary. And they all already um, have close to around 12 OEMs uh, assets brands, which they are managing over, over a, few, a few thousand turbines. Um, and they also are operating this turbine is a very, very dynamic environment where you have cyclones, hurricanes, um, huge monsoon seasons, um, summer and so on and so forth. So they are facing a lot of unknowns, which means they need a certain predictability of how their uh, the their customer assets will be performing. In on addition to uh, in addition to all these things, they obviously need to plan their spares uh, accordingly because quite a lot of spares are actually expected to be shipped out of Europe or somewhere else. That means they need to plan the lead time to be able to um, predict upfront so that they can source it and have the product or have the asset available or the components available for the asset to continue to um, provide maximum energy generation. With all these, we actually engaged with the hardcore engineering and hardcore site engineers from uh, Renault who actually helped us understand the challenges and map the challenges with uh, uh, um, uh, and how to map it onto a digital twin model. And based on this, we created an application for Renom um, to be able to um, provide a really sufficient insight for their site engineers to go and do their daily work. And, and we had to make life easier for these people on the field because they are not technology savvy people. They needed to be given on their on their iPads, or they have, have to be provided these applications on their mobile platforms where they could actually operate. And here, um, uh, Lakshman basically would, uh, would would give you a, some more insight into how their engineers work and how what are the what are the value which has been extracted out of the digital twin project. But I would like to um, say one thing basically because we had a visionary company like Renom and Lakshman leading it. Uh, he was looking into the future because uh, the, the, he's always pressed with margins. He's always pressed by his customers on availability of turbines. So it is always a challenge to continue chasing these targets. So it's the, the, the name of the game here is to change the complete business model. And he's looking forward to having to offer a, an alternative business model instead of having measure him based on the number of assets and his availability. He would like to offer that on it on an energy and a time-based generation model. That means basically he is addressing the outcomes of the customer, which is what will change the complete operation and maintenance in the area of renewable energy. With that, I would uh, like to hand it over to Lakshman to give a brief I, brief idea and brief insight into how Digital Twin has benefited his company and how he and they have evolved as part of their business. Thank you, and Lakshman, over to you. Hi, folks. Greetings to all. Uh, I'm Lakshman and Subhash Chandra Bose, uh, CEO of Renam Energy Services. Uh, we are an independent service provider based out of India, and uh, we uh, are currently managing close to about uh, one, one gigawatt plus. And we are proudly say that we are the you know, multi-technology and multi-brand and multi-capacity uh, service provider in India and uh, wherein we handle all the technologies across uh, available in the Indian sector, uh, which we also we uh, you know, carry out a complete comprehensive uh, operation and maintenance services. It means that uh, you know, we do uh, end-to-end services from uh, you know, taking over the site till uh, the complete uh, uh, handling all the uh, site-related activities. 
and uh, our challenges basically we had uh, the major challenges like a slow response time more uh, no, uh, like a slow response time the increasing you no know, the reduction in the margins for the customers and then we do have a reactive maintenance rather than the pre you know proactive maintenance these all uh, you know the operational challenges which in turn increasing my operational expenses wherein we wanted to be competitive in the market with others so we have to take this into our consideration and we started uh, uh, associated with atas to take part in the digital path so we initially we in our association we started with uh, initially with the resca uh, the scada which is basically an uh, unique wherein uh, we have multi uh, uh, technology or multi brands connected with a single server and it is a cloud based solutions and uh, this is a you know unique in the market wherein we don't need to have a different uh, no servers or different operational systems for individual model wise wherein we can connect everything in a single uh, screen and we could able to control the entire assets on a remotely so that is where our contribution started with the resca and then that will uh, really help us to reduce our you know uh, operational uh, no the increase in the uh, availability reduce the uh, kind of you know uh, failure uh, time you know reaction time to the failures and then we moved on to the ams ams is an asset management planning system which is typically uh, my uh, erp for our operational uh, uh, module which takes care of the entire digitization of our activities whatever we carry out whether it be it a breakdown maintenance be it a uh, preventive maintenance so then from these all these data we also have uh, inventory management through our uh, sap so we integrated all this into the uh, digital team uh, platform wherein we wanted to create an you know uh, ideal uh, turbine models and by doing that we have done a poc uh, with autas and uh, by doing that we have reduced almost uh, uh, you know 20% uh, realization on my mean time to repair and 12% on the my operational cost and then about 1% in the availability this is a poc research so after this we implemented amps across our fleet now and uh, we moved now down to uh, the digital twin where we are trying to do prediction of the faults so that we prepare ourselves to reduce you know uh, Uh, the major failures down time now we prepare ourselves so that we can uh, repair no mean time to repair we can bring it down at a lower level so that is our target and uh, if i just have a look at the screens right now this is a resca where we talked about the real time scada wherein we have the multi uh, models as connected across uh, right now what we are seeing is a bensis uh, turbines uh, which is 1.5 megawatt which is been connected and we do have a control over it so we can start stop you know and reset the faults by uh, from here uh, from anywhere but we have that access given to the site managers and uh, this is across our uh, the uh, india wherever we are in, where we are in operations or wherever we are connected our uh, you know uh, locations where the potential wind sites across india and each site you can just get it by clicking here you can just go take to, to that page and this is a uh, ui we call it as an ui because it's a real time Uh, monitoring and this also makes a ticketing whenever there is a event occurs this resca raises a ticketing to the amps and then the people who are on the site is being uh, alerted through amps and then they do have this and this is resca dashboard uh, this is a dashboard this is a historical uh, data where we uh, try to do uh, an analytics through uh, uh, the historical data we can choose a turbine we can choose multi model or we can choose a uh, you no know, year month or days whatever is the duration which we require we can do, do play around with that with the whether with the breakdown the event data or with the power curve or whatever it is so it will basically gives an idea of which is a good performing which is the low performing assets and uh, when we talk about uh, amps uh, this re really uh, uh, operational you know uh, maintenance module wherein uh, we have a site site wise year wise data are connected here so you have uh, you know particular site how many turbines are connected and i can drill down to the individual turbine or uh, by year which is a low performing which is high performing in terms of my operational cost and in terms of the availability and in terms of mean, mean time to repair and mean time between failures so we do monitor the complete turbine 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 performances from here like a failure analysis turbine performance and asset with respect to you know cost of operations either number of components are with the cost of uh, component and operational cost and we do also have a mtd or mtb app which gives us an idea you know how we perform across the fleet and then is there anything to be 
you know really looked into and then we can look into this so this helps us into a, you know really look at the uh, asset as a whole you know on, from the 365 degree now from this all three uh, we do have an inventory management uh, system with the, which is with the sap so along with this we have moved down now to a digital twin wherein we would like to do a you know forecasting of energy as well as the forecasting of the failure that means we talk about you know uh, uh, remaining useful life are you your of a subsystem or a component. Now we started working to a level of subsystems wherein we have a 3D uh, this thing. Also, we are trying to do a knowledge management here. Uh, knowledge management when we talk about because there is a challenge in the market to get a skilled manpower. So we would like to have uh, know the, uh, all the data, all the technical uh, know-hows to get into this digital twin so that whenever someone who wanted to attend to the problem, he can just go to the knowledge management page and then look at what is the, what are the possible causes for each event. So he can directly look into the uh, problems rather than you know, uh, uh, looking around and then getting a, uh, help from some uh, senior people. So this is a 3D model wherein we are trying to even uh, visualize where exactly the if any event occurs. We also uh, look at where exactly the sensors are available, whether it is in the pitch or in the uh, or in the generator side. So that we, we, it will directly direct them to the uh, location where exactly is the uh, you know, uh, alarm or uh, even might have caused, and then by clicking that, then he will also be uh, popped up with uh, possible causes of failures uh, for <coughs> related to that particular event. So this is how uh, we are uh, looking at, and uh, this we are looking at and validating this, uh, especially for the RUL, the remaining useful life, and uh, going forward, I hope that we will. Once this POC is completely done and we'll be deploying all across all our fleets. Thanks for attending this session. Um, um, as, as I said earlier, uh, these technologies are available today and these are pre-built solutions with our services like uh, IoT Sitewise. Uh, and customers are using it today around the world. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me or to Murli or to go deeper into solutions they have built. Uh, they can always facilitate any additional solutions from Renom. You can also reach out to Renom. Um, um, other than that, uh, thank you very much.